Hey everybody, this is Erica, the technology nerd likes to film stuff. Mobile World Congress is right around the corner and we are going to be seeing a lot of devices released. I'm not sure which ones, but HTC is going to be having a press event. I'm not sure if they're going to be releasing the M9 as we're all thinking and speculating that it's going to be called. But what we are seeing right now all over the interwebs are leaked photos of the M9, also speculations about what these specs are going to be. So I figured this would be a good time to revisit the HTC One M8. It's old now, but it's not dead yet, and I still think it's a relevant phone. It's actually one of my favorite phones of the year of 2014. And also, it now is updated to Lollipop. It's kind of based still off of that Sense 6. I'm hoping with the M9 we see a full-blown material design because I see that this is Lollipop, but it's not that really lovely Lollipop that I am seeing on vanilla Androids, namely things like Nexus 6 and second-generation Moto G. But this phone is still very charming, and so is that dot case. You can see my Mario there. Love it! So I want to talk a little bit about the experience with Lollipop on this and what it's like to use it right now. And also I want to talk about how it's aged because I do see that it's scuffed and dinged in places. So before we go and take a look at this, I want to say that I did book my flight to Mobile World Congress in Spain, Barcelona, and I also got my hotel room as well. Unfortunately, GSMA has been kind of picky and they denied my breast pass. So I'm a little bit panicking trying to see if they will accept me underneath some other means because I really don't want to be screwed out of not getting to go to my favorite event of the year and also being screwed out of all the money that I spent. Don't ask how much that was. So I am frustrated, but bear with me. I'm going to do my best to get over to Mobile World Congress. I could just take a vacation in Barcelona, but I don't think that's going to fly very well knowing all the other cool tech nerds are playing with all the cool devices that have been released. Anyway, enough with the complaining, let's go ahead and look at the M8. So what is it about the HTC One M8 that gives it its charm? What is it that I really like? Well, I do like the design of this phone. I really like this unibody metal. I do make fun of it from time to time because it does look kind of like a kitchen appliance with this brushed aluminum finish, but the other colors are more of a matte, more of a matte finish to them. And I also like how this device is curved, so it sits really nice in my hand. It cradles my hand really well. And it's not a particularly wide device, so it fits in my small hands, and I do appreciate that. Although this device is quite tall, but we do have these really nice front-facing stereo speakers. And I'm a person who watches a lot of media on these mobile devices, and sound really matters. If you're going to have a nice image, it also makes sense to have nice sound as well. So I wish more phones would have stereo front-facing speakers like this, but that is definitely a feature that I have always really liked about the One series. I've also really liked some of the features that this phone has, such as if you hold the phone like this in standby and you go upward from the bottom, it's going to bring you back into the application that you were in. So you can see if I do that again, it brings me right back into the Google Play Store. If I go from the left-hand side, it brings me into Blink Feed. And if I go from the right-hand side, it unlocks the device. And of course, if it's sitting down on a desk, if you double tap it, it turns the display on. I think that helps to account for the fact that this device is so tall because it's hard to push that button on the top. So being able to double tap does remedy that. And I've also really liked that if you take the phone like this and immediately push down on the volume rocker, it turns on the camera for you. I also really like this dot view case. A lot of people gave it a bad reputation, but I think it's quite functional and they've added more features as time has gone by. I do like now that it's customizable. You can change the backgrounds that was something that they updated pretty quickly. You can see that we have all these themes here underneath the dot view application. We can change it to a nice animal pattern. There's even ones for holiday themes such as Halloween, Christmas, and New Year's. I really love the little pumpkin. So just features like this are things that I really love. And if you have a notification while this is closed, if you double tap on this, it will tell you here at the bottom which application that is. One of the things I liked most though is that this is probably the smoothest Android phone that I've played with of 2014. And we've also got an SD card slot with 32 gigabytes of internal storage. There's just a lot to like about this phone. Simplicity and features is what matters. Battery life and a nice interface. And I think the M8 has all of those things. 
Now looking at the camera, it's really not something that's been a strong suit of the HTC One M8, and it really wasn't a strong suit on the M7 either. It's that same four megapixel ultra pixel sensor. They added this duo camera feature, but I found it to be quite gimmicky. It did have some fun features, you focus features, making things become in focus or out of focus. But I think that the thing that HTC can really approve on on this phone is having a much better camera. We're hearing 20.7 megapixels. And honestly, I don't think that they should change much about the design. I think it's great already. A lot of people don't like these chins on the top and the bottom, but I understand that we've got these stereo speakers. Maybe they can get rid of this HTC part at the bottom here. In terms of the display, I really don't want a much bigger display. I'm hearing some people saying it might be 5.5 inches in Quad HD. And I think it's just this five inches, the pixel density looks really nice. We've got good battery life. I don't see the point of making it a huge Quad HD display that guzzles the battery. I'd rather them keep it at 1080p. We'll see what happens with that. And of course, we're going to be seeing a better SOC inside of this Snapdragon 810, but it was already a very smooth, nice performing phone. So now let's check out Lollipop a little bit. This has been updated to Lollipop. It does still look like Sense 6, and I'm a little bit disappointed because we're missing some things right now in Lollipop that you have on vanilla Androids, like I was mentioning before, such as if you pull downward from the top here, I'm really not seeing what I would like to see. We don't have access to a flashlight underneath the M8 here. That's one of the features I really like about Lollipop. And also, we have the ability to change the brightness here with a slider. And you can tap this to change brightness between auto. You can see you can touch it a few times and it does change the brightness, but I want access to a slider. And instead of keeping it inside the interface that you're currently looking at, it brings you more underneath settings to slide this around still. I don't know if this is going to change with the M9. I'm hoping that they make it more lollipop-like. Also, as far as I can see, we don't have the multi-user mode. On my Moto G2, if I touch right here, you can see I can make a couple of different modes, guest mode. I can add another user. They can have all access to all their applications if they make a new profile. And on here, I can touch my little person, my little avatar, and I can see me and kid mode, but I don't really see any other ability to create another mode. That's another thing I'm really hoping will change. At least on the M8, when you go downward once from the top, it brings you to the notifications, and then of course, if you go again, it brings you into the quick toggle settings. So that is there. Another thing that I am seeing that's a little bit different is that HTC is doing a hybrid kind of with how they're handling applications. They're kind of doing their own thing still, and kind of incorporating a little bit of what Lollipop does. So underneath app notifications, we can just pick any app, doesn't matter what it is. You can see that we have a little bit of a difference here. Underneath priority here, it says show notifications at the top of the list. So it's going to prioritize notifications from Audible, for example, if I click on here. If I go underneath the vanilla Lollipop, you can see it says priority, show notifications at the top of the list and keep them coming when the device is set to priority interruptions only. So on Vanilla Lollipop, if you hit the volume rocker down, you can see we have none, priority, and all. So if I keep notifications on none, there's going to be no notifications. If you keep it on priority, it will be only those that I am allowing to bother me. So Badland can send me notifications when it's on priority interruptions mode. So where HTC has kind of kept a hybrid is if you go underneath their quick toggles here, we have a do not disturb mode that's kind of their own. It's got some parameters that they allow you to decide, but it's not like what we have on this vanilla lollipop. And I honestly like how Google does it better. If you hit the volume rocker here, it just brings you into their standard fare where you have access to volumes, music videos, alarms. So that's a little bit different and I don't know if they're going to change that. I am happy to see the HTC is handling notifications the same way as original or vanilla lollipop. If you touch it, you can see it says touch again and it's going to bring you right into the application. If you hold on it like this, it's going to either give you more information. So it brings you right back into app notifications where you can block or give it priority. Or if you hold it down again and you click on this one, it's going to bring you right into settings for this particular application. So they did keep those things. And also I've really loved that you have the ability to just simply drag one of these icons here and it will bring you into one of these applications as well. So it's not all bad. I'm happy to see that the home button, the back button, and also the recent button is in the same place on both of these. You can see we've got the same layout here. 
We've got these cards for our recent applications and also screen pinning is available on both devices. So we can pin a certain application and it will keep people from leaving the application. You can set a password so that they can't get out of it. That way they can't get nosy and go about your phone. Then of course, something that's here to stay is blink feed. If we go from the left hand side, there's your blink feed. On vanilla Lollipop, if you go to the side, you have the Google Now. Of course, you still have access to Google Now. It's just going upward from the bottom and that will pull you right into it. Then there's other simple things, such as if you go underneath your app tray, we've got this white type of an interface now versus the same as that we've always had on the M8. I don't really expect this to change. I don't know if I want to see this being white either, some type of a hybrid of what we have here. I can understand there are some things that companies will keep skinned differently than the original Lollipop. We're going to be seeing that a lot. So I don't expect this to change here. So now I wanted to take a second to thank my sponsors over at Squarespace so much for making content creation possible. I kind of have been in a fight with having a website. I have YouTube, most definitely, but I have not been the best with website building. In college, I did take classes to design and build websites, but that was not my strong suit. And I had a website, but it's been having technical difficulties and it's down right now. So with Squarespace, I actually am building a nice site right now. I'm very excited because it's really, really easy. It's as simple as changing little sliders to change the fonts and the padding and to change everything that I need. And it also has a lot of really pretty templates to start off with, so I've been very happy with this. I hope that you guys can go and check out my new website. What's really awesome about Squarespace and what I have seen already for myself is that they have really great customer service. It's 24 seven, you can chat with them. You can also email them, although they don't have a way to call them on the phone. Their customer service is actually really, really excellent. And what's also really nice about Squarespace is that you can start a 14 day free trial. You don't even have to use a credit card or anything whatsoever. You can go and design your site. And then if you like what you see there, you can make it live and then you can sign up with a subscription. So their subscriptions start at $8 a month. And the nice thing that helps out my channel is if you go to Squarespace slash Erica, you can use that discount code to get 10% off for your very first purchase on Squarespace. So I really recommend them. The learning curve to learn how to use their whole interface is like less than a day to learn how to use it. And I'm seeing some really great results so far. So again, follow Squarespace slash Erica when you're ready to purchase your first subscription. It starts at $8 a month. And I'm really liking the results that I see. And if you guys are challenged like I am with making websites, it might be a good option. So go and check them out. Now, since the release of the Desire Eye, HTC has also given us an update underneath the HTC One M8 camera application with new eye features. And I do think that this does bring some extra fun. It's like HTC needs to compensate for what they don't have with a good quality camera. They give you nice features. So the new things that we have are split capture, photo booth, and there's some new things underneath selfie. I have to admit that I had some fun with the photo booth. So what this photo booth type of setting does is it allows you to take several different photos and you can put them in a grid shape like this. You can put it in four or four this way. And I had some fun with that. You can see my fabulous, fantastic example here. All the most ridiculous faces that I could possibly make. This is attractive, so very attractive. That's even more attractive. So I have to admit that's fun. Then we've also got something called split capture, which allows me to say, hello, am I covering the camera? No, and you can see that at the same time, I can film what it is that I'm looking at. So I can go ahead and hit this button here, take a picture, or we can make a video that way. This is something that a lot of other cameras have in some type of form. So there's me, hi, and then there's this thing that I'm playing with. If you want, you can trim it, then you can save it, you can share it, all that fun stuff. Then you've got the cool selfie features. So we've got a live makeup setting, so you can change this. You can take a picture and it's going to keep the makeup on your face, or even in video now, you can have this makeup setting. So if I film myself, I can make myself look blemish free. Testing, Some testing, blemishes. Testing. No blemishes. Testing, testing, testing. 
There's also setting now, if you go underneath camera options, right there, you can turn on auto selfie and voice selfie. So auto selfie, if I take the camera and I hold my face, let's see if it can see me. Where am I? So I held still for a couple of seconds and it saw that I was making some type of a face and it decided to take a picture of me, so lovely. Then if I say something like capture, it'll take a picture as well. And if I say action, it will record a video for me. We've also got a fun new video call feature that allows face tracking, so it focuses on the face. And there's a screen sharing feature where the person who's on the other end can see what you're doing on your screen. You can demonstrate things, circle things, show how to do things, so it's pretty awesome. So there is one last cool feature that I want to show you with the camera. It's kind of like a morphing type of effect, type of an editing effect. Here's Ellen Page. A lot of you guys say, oh, you look like Ellen Page. Some people say, oh, you look like Ariana Grande. No, no, I'm just me. I'm just me. That's me. Just me. I had a cool selfie party at one point, and so what you can do is you can take a picture of yourself. Here's a no K one, and then we go underneath edit. If you go underneath effects, there's this thing that's called face fusion. So here's my face, yes. Then we go and pick Ellen Page's face. And then we've got this slider thing. And this is really creepy because here's me. And you slide it and you can get kind of an in-between of faces. And then you can go and put full face, someone else's face, on my body. So there's Ellen Page with my dark, dark brown hair. So that that's tremendously fun. That's a fun thing. I like that. That's just so weird. That's just weird. It's wrong. But it's fun. And I can save it and share to all social media channels. The last bit to talk about is how the phone has held up. I've used this phone quite a bit as it's one of the phones I really like. I'm not telling you which is my favorite phone. That's something I don't do. But over time, I've noticed that this type of a coating, whatever it is, starts to get dinged. I actually showed this in my review. It was dinged then as well, but expect to see little marks and dings in this coating that they put on here. And it's not like it's missing anything, it's just that the paint or whatever is gone, so that doesn't look so nice. And then I see little chips and dings all around the outside on the chamfered edge. I haven't dropped it on the ground, it hasn't seen any harsh impacts, so this is, it looks alright. Now I don't use screen protectors, I hate screen protectors. Ever since Gorilla Glass 3 came out, I stopped using them, and I'm seeing that my M8 has held up actually pretty well. I don't see actually any scratches. I'm sure that if I really, really looked, I could find very, very small surface scratches that are hard to see unless I breathe on it. But the display at least has held up very nicely. And as for people who have dropped their phone on the floor, I've seen that it kind of has some chips here, but no big dings like I've seen with the M7. So here it is after a year. It's held up pretty well and it's had quite a bit of use. So it all comes down to, do I still think that this is a phone that's worthwhile? Yes, actually, yes I do. It's nice and smooth. It's got a lot of fun features, but if you're someone who is wanting to have a phone that also has a really nice camera, you might want to get the M9. I'm sure we're going to be seeing some favorable changes with the camera with that device. But otherwise, I have not had much to complain about with the M8. And it's still definitely one of my favorite phones that I've played with in a while. So I will be very excited to see what HTC comes out with with the M9. I'm sure that is a phone that I will be trying to get as soon as possible and to review, well, as soon as possible, as in depth as possible. So let me know what you are expecting with the M9 and if you are going to decide to stay with your M8. Or even let me know if you think that the M8 is a worthy phone at all. I know people have their favoritisms. So thank you everybody for watching. This has been Erica the Technology Nerd who likes to film stuff. Please rate, comment, and subscribe. It might be fun to make another one of these videos with something like the Galaxy S5 or even the Z2, which I kind of looked at, and I didn't look at the Z3, so I might want to get one of those and see if I can make one of these types of videos as well. So let me know what you think of all the upgrades to the M8 so far that have happened over time, and have a good night.